Ja. We are in. All right, there's absolutely no drag on this. Good morning. Uh, I'm just out. I've not got long today because I'm going to have to go for uh, a COVID swab ahead of my knee operation. Uh, and that means it's probably the last chance I'll have to go fishing for a little while. Certainly anything involving wading because I'm going to have to have some post-operative recovery time. Um, so I thought I'd come out with my, my granddad's rod uh, and come and throw the, the Whopper Plopper 90. Uh, getting towards the end of summer here, it might be the last chance for some top water action. So I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do with this stuff. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Let's see if we can get that. Idea of that ideal pace to... That real popping, plopping sound effect. And see how we go. I was a bit concerned that because this this really old fluga reel that I've got, I didn't know it's not a particularly fast gear ratio. So I was just concerned about getting that cadence of that lure just right, but actually it's totally fine. Fire it out near that dead wood. It might be a little bit cool for some true top water stuff just at the moment. See. So this uh, reel has no free spill mechanism, uh, just reliant on the, the handle spinning and there's, there's certainly no braking mechanism in it. <laughs> there was the, the original uh, format of it has a, a kind of a you know slight friction based anti backlash uh, dial. But on my restored version, that uh, isn't really what I call functional. <laughs> managed to, amazingly, I managed amazingly managed to get most of the parts that I needed, which, considering the age of the reel, is astounding. But I haven't come across the uh, the backlash mechanism yet. Whoops! God. He fell in. I think I'm going to have to experiment with some fluorocarbon traces. I think on a longer cast, that uh, titanium trace just pulls the nose of the lure down a little bit. So it doesn't immediately start popping. Oh, I thought, I'd, yeah, just it a bit, and then with a bit less thumb, going for distance.
see what we got here, just a fairly shallow diving floating crankbait. Pretty bread and butter really. Good thing about it floating is it lets <laughs> me get the backlashes out. He says, hopefully. Without it snagging on the bottom. That stiffer braid actually helps from that point of view. Right. No idea how deep it is here. Give them every chance at this spot. <laughs> oh, yeah. We are in. All right, there's absolutely no drag on this. <sighs> so even us Jack. Feels like an epic battle. There we go. Yes! In the net. Right, let's get the mat out. Stay there, sunshine. See if we can get a bit of a release on this one. There you fella. Yeah, he's ready to go, I think. Just make sure he's chilled. Uh, it's a pike. Oh, yeah. Wow. Did you expect to get them in here? Or? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was after, really. It's a decent size. Isn't it? It's a good fun on little rod, yeah. Go on, fella, off you go. I have been known to have 97 last casts in the past, and uh, yeah, it is definitely time for me to get onto my uh, hospital appointment. But just, yeah, fantastic bit of excitement um, for a very short session, uh, snatched just ahead of having to go in and not being able to fish for a little while. So, yeah, brilliant fun on my granddad's rod and reel. So, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it too, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Back of the car now, sweating, out of breath, late as usual. Um, but if you enjoyed this, do remember to click subscribe and then also click on the notifications bell and select all notifications. That way, the next time something like this comes up, uh, YouTube will let you know. So yeah, cheers. Thanks a lot.